Scary Mysteries, Twisted Twos, Joanne Cameron, and Dylan Redwine. Tales of Hauntings, Murder, and Scary Mysteries. Every week, Twisted Twos dives into a pair of uniquely terrifying true stories that are worthy of a more in-depth look. For this week, we focus on the story of Joanne Cameron, the woman who can feel no pain, and the mysterious disappearance of Dylan Redwine. Get ready for Scary Mysteries, Twisted Twos. Number one, Joanne Cameron. For many of us, pain is a troublesome burden. Figuratively and sometimes physically, many would do anything they can do to stop themselves from feeling it. While it seems impossible, at least one woman knows what that's like. 72-year-old retired teacher from the Scottish Highlands, Joanne Cameron, is a person who feels no pain. She knows the word, understands people are in pain, but has never felt it herself. She hasn't felt rage, grief, anxiety, dread, or even fear often associated with pain. For Cameron, the only time she realizes her skin is burning is when she smells it being singed. What's more, when she recently had to have hip surgery, there were no trigger signs because she didn't feel any pain. Her husband and family noticed she was walking funny and insisted she go to the hospital. Once there, they ran some x-rays and found her hip to be mangled. Her doctors were amazed she didn't complain about the pain at all. Despite living like this, Cameron never found out anything was wrong with her until she was 65. She had undergone another surgery for her thumb and all she had was a single Tylenol after the surgery. It was the same when she had the hip surgery. Her anesthetist, Dr. Devjit Srivastava, looked further into her medical background and became curious. When they studied Cameron's genetic makeup, they discovered she had a distinct gene mutation that allowed her to feel no pain at all. Scientists found Cameron's mutation fascinating. For regular people like you and me, adrenaline releases into our brain to signal something upsetting, fear, or anxiety, but for Cameron, this just simply never happens. Prior to this, Joanne simply thought she was just healthy, that she didn't feel or have any need for painkillers even after two natural births. Even more fascinating, her mutated genes not only eliminate her feelings of pain, but they also make her happier slightly forgetful and less anxious. It's also believed this mutation allows her wounds to heal faster. Scientists discovered two major mutations in her genes. The first one they spotted is common in the general population, which is that there's a dampening down of the activity of a gene called FAAH. This gene is responsible for creating enzymes that break down a chemical called anemdemind. Anendamind is crucial to memory, mood, and pain sensation and works much like THC in cannabis. When it isn't broken down thoroughly, there's more analgesic and other effects felt by the person. In Cameron's case, this is why she doesn't feel any pain. Her second gene mutation is the discovery there's a missing chunk of her DNA. This particular DNA was previously unknown to scientists and they have called it FAAH out. This group of genes serve as volume control for the FAAH gene. Without this volume control gene, the FAAH goes silent and allows the production of anemdemind to build up in the system. Cameron has twice as much of this compared to regular people, and as a result, she's naturally always happy and doesn't feel any anxiety, fear, pain like the rest of us. When scientists looked into her family history, she said her mother felt pain normally, so does Cameron's daughter, Amy. But Cameron's son carries the second mutation, which also dulls his sense of pain. According to Cameron, she believes she got the genes from her father, who she claims also never felt pain. Cameron is currently working with scientists and researchers. She's thrilled her condition could possibly help lead the way to therapies that could mimic the effect she has. There are countless people all over the world living in pain, and new effective treatments would certainly be helpful. Number two, Dylan Redwine. Born to Mark Redwine and Elaine Hatfield, 
Dylan Redwine was only 13 years old when he was reported missing in southeastern Colorado in November of 2012. The couple was in the middle of a huge divorce and custody battle. The young boy disappeared after he went on a court-ordered visit at his father's home just outside of Durango. According to Mark, he went out on morning errands on November 19, 2012. When he returned home four hours later, his son Dylan was gone. The disappearance triggered hundreds of people to assist in search efforts, hoping to find the young boy alive, but winter came and the search efforts were put on hold. Police initially believed the young boy was abducted. At the time, there was an $11,000 reward, but this didn't generate any solid leads. After seven months of wondering what happened to Dylan, hunters found the remains and skull of a young child at Middle Mountain Road. The area is a U.S. Forest Service road that wound through the San Juan National Forest. Crucially, that road started near Mark Redwine's home, just 10 miles away. From the start, police were suspicious of Mark and his testimony. Authorities said there were red flags due to his inconsistent statements and behavior throughout the investigation. Soon after, Mark Redwine was arrested and charged with second-degree murder and child abuse. Investigators said they found evidence of Dylan's blood at several places in Mark's home. A canine search also indicated a cadaver scent, meaning the home had once held a dead body in the bed, pickup truck, and the clothes Mark had worn on the night his son disappeared. Forensics also examined the skull and found it to have indications of blunt force trauma in two locations. There were also markings indicative of a knife as opposed to an animal attack. A criminal profiler was brought in and described the killer to be a psychopath narcissist who thought he was smarter than everybody else. Various forensic evidence led officers back to Mark Redwine. During the indictment, it was revealed Corey Redwine and his younger brother Dylan had seen compromising photos of their father. The two had planned to confront their dad about it. The disgusting photos showed Mark wearing women's clothes, makeup, a diaper, and eating feces from that diaper. Family members believe Dylan may have brought this to his father's attention during his visit. This might have provoked Mark into a rage, which led him to kill his own son. Mark pleaded not guilty in court and requested a jury trial. The trial has been delayed several times and Mark has spent his time in jail for over 600 days since his arrest in 2017. But right before his trial date in September of 2019, one of his lawyers was arrested for domestic violence and assault and a judge ordered Mark's trial to be postponed so a sufficient lawyer could be found as a replacement. It could take months for the new attorney to get caught up with the case and for that trial to finally proceed. So there were two of the most amazing and vicious stories around. The world could be a crazy place and Twisted 2's is sure to show you why. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please consider supporting us on Patreon and subscribe to our channel. We have new videos coming out every Wednesday and Saturday we know you'll want to check out. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.